On this episode of the Catholic Echo Podcast from the Diocese of Youngstown, brought to you by the annual Diocesan Appeal and Cumulus Radio Youngstown, we're talking about Diocesan Media Day with Bishop David Bonner, myself, Father John Michael Lavelle, and other members of our Diocesan Communications Department. Find more about this episode's topic, including articles from the Catholic Echo, at www.catholicecho.org slash podcast. And now the host of the Catholic Echo podcast, Dennis Viviana. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Echo podcast. We are talking about diocese communications this week. And joining me is Bishop David Bonner. Thanks as always. It's my honor to be here, Dennis. You were installed as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown on January 21st, 2021, during the pandemic. And in your first pastoral letter, you identified five priorities in the diocese, one of which is communication. Now, with somebody with communication background, you've built this communication staff from scratch. What can you tell us about the situation you inherited after the passing of Bishop George Murray? Well, you know, when I came here on November 17th, 2020, for the, the announcement, I remember sitting in the bishop's office and asking Monsignor Sifrin the question, do you have a communications director or communications office? And Monsignor Sifrin said, no, it was a wish and a desire of Bishop Murray, but he never got around to it. So after I was ordained the sixth bishop of Youngstown, I made it a priority to develop a communications office with a communications director. It's heartening to look back at the last almost four years to see from where we've come. You know, we've really come from a very small ad hoc operation to a full-fledged communications operation with a studio, We transitioned the newspaper to the magazine. We have social media. And and this is no way diminishes the great work of CTNY. While that was a communication effort, it was not a communications office where we deal with the the media and, and what have you. So we've come a long way, and I'm very excited about where we are and where we're going. Now, you wrote in your first pastoral letter, you said we need to take advantage of every media source at our disposal and use it for the good of the church, if that's newsprint, email, website, television, and social media. Now, social media has become the new front door of the church, you said. What progress have we made as a diocese in our parishes of using social media and media in general? Well, I'd like to think that social media is a part of every parish, their mission. It's hard to measure the impact, though, I think, but the reality is it's so important to have social media because if we look at the statistics, not everyone who's Catholic comes to Mass. And so how do we reach out to these people? How do we share the good news of our faith? I think social media is a wonderful way to do that, or at least to invite them deeper into the fold. And of course, with this podcast, broadcasting on multiple platforms, whether it's social media, whether it's Podbean, and if you're an Apple or Android user, and of course, YouTube as well. Now, what opportunities do you see for us to better meet the people where they are, as quoted in your pastoral letter? Well, I think there's a posture of listening and looking that we need to embrace. I mean, to just assess where people are. You know, when I was a vocation director for the Diocese of Pittsburgh many years ago, my audience was men 18 to 40, trying to recruit them to be priests. And thanks to the bequests of two deceased priests, we were able to develop two 30-second TV spots that ran during the NFL Sunday package on CBS. And some of these were picked up by other dioceses. So it was an innovative way to reach young men to consider the priesthood. So I think we need to be just as savvy and intentional as a diocese in terms of our outreach and encounter with people using all the social media, all the communication venues possible. Now we've received a couple questions from listeners who want some guidance about media outlets labeled Catholic, but they are providing conflicting views. What are some high quality and official sources of Catholic media that you recommend that are some of your favorites? Well, you make a great point. Not everything that's Catholic always feeds us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may just upset us. We're kind of in the middle of these wars. I I remember speaking to our seminarians a year or so ago under the title, What Feeds Us? And I talked about how we can go to different websites and be fed. We can also be steered in a wrong direction. So in terms of websites, you know, I think 
officially, the USCCB website is an excellent website that has many, many opportunities to grow in the faith, to learn about the faith. There's also, you know, our Sunday Visitor News that went to a news operation. It's a well-established entity in the church. You know, there are others, and I, I think one of the services that we can provide is to put together a list mm -hmm. for our faithful, because I think it's important to be in the center. If we lean too much to one side, be it the left or the right, we get caught up in a polarization. Remember, Jesus, he prayed one of his last prayers that all may be one. It doesn't mean that we agree on everything all the time or that there's a sense of uniformity, but we do have to be centered in the way we live out our faith. What are some other goals that you have moving forward when it comes to communications? Well, now that we've put the infrastructure into place and the personnel, I think we are going to become more intentional about transitioning from information to formation or making formation more primary than information. These venues that we have before us, the podcasts, the social media, the Catholic Echo, they are opportunities for us to proclaim the joy of the gospel and to teach the faith and to tell the story of our faith. I really see that's where we're going, is to be more intentional about formation, helping to form minds and hearts for the future. Bishop Bonner, thanks as always. Coming up next, you'll hear from our Director of Diocesan Communications, Father John Michael Lavelle, as well as some of our other team members. Keep it here. Much more to come on the Catholic Echo Podcast. Where can you hear about faith in action? What does hope look like in our parishes and schools? How do we share God's love in our charities and outreach? The Catholic Echo amplifies the voice of Catholics. In the six counties of the Diocese of Youngstown. Connect with us to be inspired and challenged. To a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and His Church. Visit catholicecho.org to find the Catholic Echo magazine. Weekly podcasts, inspirational videos. And our Sunday Mass from St. Columba Cathedral. Follow Diocesan Social Media on Facebook and Instagram. Or find what's happening now at doy.org. The Catholic Echo is your source for spiritual growth in the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. When storms hit, we are there to rebuild. As our neighbors age, we lighten their burdens. As our veterans adjust, we ease their transitions. In every part of the country, we are there. We are Catholic Charities. We serve millions each year regardless of their faith. We put food back on tables, unlock doors, and walk together on the road back. Help Catholic Charities serve your neighbors in need. Join us at wearethere.us. The Catholic Echo Magazine is delivered free of charge to anyone who is registered at a parish in the Diocese of Youngstown. But subscriptions are also available for non-parishioners. A subscription costs $40 per year, and you can buy one for yourself or gift a subscription to a loved one. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org for more information. The Catholic Echo podcast will inform and entertain the faithful of the diocese by covering various topics that are relevant in the church today. Bishop David J. Bonner begins the podcast with your host, Dennis Biviano, on the topic of the day, and then you'll hear from others with expertise on that topic. You can listen to the Catholic Echo podcast on WHOTFM 101. WYFMFM 102.9, WQXKFM 105.1 on Sundays at 6.30 a.m. or catch it online by going to www.catholicecho.org slash podcast. The Catholic Echo Podcast is produced by the Communications Department of the Diocese of Youngstown.
Hello, my name is Katie Wagner and I am the editor-in-chief of the Catholic Echo Magazine. I am here today with my communications team here at the Diocese of Youngstown. And this particular episode is dedicated to Diocesan Media Day. So the first thing that we're going to do here with the team is we're going to give some information about ourselves. You know, a little bit about me. I am from Indiana, Pennsylvania, which is the Christmas tree capital of the world and the hometown of Jimmy Stewart. I went to college in Erie, Pennsylvania, and then moved to Pittsburgh, where I worked for Mount Lebanon Magazine. And now I'm here at the diocese. I have a twin brother named Jack. That was always my fun fact in elementary school when teachers would make you do that. And I absolutely love working here. But I have several other fellow employees that we'd like to get around to. So let's talk a little bit about Father Lavelle, who is our fearless leader and runs the communications department along with a million other things. So (laughs) why don't you talk about yourself? Thank you, Katie. I'm Father Jack Lavelle. I've been a priest of the diocese for a little over 24 years. In fact, next May, I'll celebrate my 25th anniversary. Over that time, I served as an associate pastor, a parochial vicar in two parishes, one in Maslin and one here in Youngstown. Then early on, I became a pastor and spent nine years in Ravenna and then nine years in Niles. And I've spent a little over three years now as the pastor of St. Michael in Canfield. Over that time, I've also served as the temporary administrator in parishes in Salem, Latonia, and also currently back in Niles with the merger of St. Pope John the 23rd. Over that time, I've also had a variety of other roles. I think we see in our diocese that no one is able to just be in one parish and take care of one community. And so I've been very fortunate over those years to be involved in another lifetime with what was called CTNY at that moment. Worked with Catholic Charities, Director of Faith Formation at John F. Kennedy School in Warren. And then when Bishop Bonner came to the diocese, he asked me not only to move to St. Michael and Canfield, but to become the first vicar of missionary discipleship. And under that, I've also added development, stewardship, and now communications. So it's kind of a (laughs) little roadmap of the last 24 years. A little bit of everything. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Father. We also have Michael Hoy. You run our diocesan socials, and Mm -hmm. you also assist with the appeal. Is there anything else I'm missing? No, that's pretty much it. I'm the fund development specialist in social media corner, so I just kind of monitor posts on Facebook, Instagram, as well as create content, do promotional videos. I work with the appeal as well as I Give Catholic. My area's expertise, I would say, like art, writing, video making, and content creation. How did you learn how to do all of that? Well, I went to YSU for telecommunications. At first, it was uh, computer science, and then it was engineering, but I found that pretty quickly I was not good at that. So I went to telecommunications, <laughs> and that was my that was my area. I did uh, videos for YSU for their departments until COVID hit, and then I had to stop. But I just always loved editing videos, video creation, and all stuff like that. Well, you found the right job. Yeah. <laughs> And we also have Megan Farrell here, who you cannot see this, but she's wearing a fabulous sparkly jacket today. Megan does internal communications here at the diocese. So she does a lot with the website (laughs) and bulletin announcements and the communique. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Megan. I have been all over the place. (laughs) Similarly to Father Lavelle, I have over 20 years of experience in different nonprofits, but I started off studying world religions at Oberlin College. I was not Catholic until the end of that time, so Easter Vigil. I joined the Catholic Church and then spent 10 years in Cleveland working mostly in the field of adult basic education and family education. So I taught, I did trainings, I worked for some national publishers, and that's how I got into the publishing communication side of it. And then we moved back to my husband's hometown of Jefferson, Ohio, up in Ashbeela County, and continued some of that publishing work, but also worked for Our Lady Peace Parish up in Ashtabula as director of religious education. And I also work in religious education with Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, their national association. I make materials on top of all of the technical stuff that I do here. So joining the diocese has been a real joy. I've got to do a lot of the web design. We've revamped the website, but also working on the communique. And I think my favorite part is working 
directly with the parishes on their websites or their bulletins or whatever kind of communications materials they're trying to put out and collaborate with us on. Fantastic. Yeah, one thing I like to tell people when I mention Megan is that she literally is basically a carpenter. So <laughs> I know through your work with Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, you do a lot of woodworking, and I just I just think that's fascinating. That's yeah, very cool. It's fun. So <laughs> We have two other members of our communications team, and they're sitting in the booth. Bob and Dennis, would you come in here and introduce yourselves? We have Dennis Biviano. He does our public relations. Yeah. And he did the first half of this segment, but Dennis, <laughs> did you talk about yourself at all? I'm a local product here, born in Niles, born JFK graduate, Kent State University. Uh, I was in the TV news business for about 21 years and made the transition into PR. I joined the staff here in January. It's been a quite a wild ride, but I'm really enjoying it. It's been a pleasure to work with you great guys in the communications department. And Bob, get in here. You never get to be on yeah. this end of things. Or we can just talk or about you. Or we can you. just talk about you. I think we could talk about Bob. So <laughs> Bob has been working at CTNY for 28 years, and he has... Father, you could probably talk about Bob a little bit better than I can Yeah. he worked at CTNY. That I've probably known Bob the longest. I know I've known him the longest of anyone in our communications department, and I think we're almost the same age. He just had a birthday, so now we are the same age. But Bob has done an outstanding job. You know, when we were out at CTNY, taking care of the mass for shut-ins, other TV programming that we had, our wineskins, which still continues. But I also know that what Bob also brings to it is a passion for the Valley, very interested and active in the, the sports world and reporting on that and knowing a great deal about that, but also very active in church. One of the interesting facts about Bob is he was a reader, I know, at one point at Mass, and he would get to Mass and think they were doing the wrong readings because we had already taped a couple weeks oh. of wineskins with scripture segments and so he already had those readings in his head from three weeks back, and he'd get up there and think, these are the wrong readings, these are the wrong readings, and then realize we had already done that. So one of the things I think about communications is we do have to, you want to live in the present, but we always have to be living in the future because we need to have things prepared and ready to go out. So, But Bob has been a great gift to the diocese and our communications department for, as he said, nearly 30 years. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned his involvement with sports and reporting in sports, but literally Bob is a high school football announcer, which I think is very, very cool. So so anyway, that's a little introduction to our team here at the diocese. And up next, we'll be talking a little bit about the projects that we're working on. When storms hit, we are there to rebuild. As our neighbors age, we lighten their burdens. As our veterans adjust, we ease their transitions. In every part of the country, we are there. We are Catholic Charities. We serve millions each year regardless of their faith. We put food back on tables, unlock doors, and walk together on the road back. Help Catholic Charities serve your neighbors in need. Join us at wearethere.us. Where can you hear about faith in action? What does hope look like in our parishes and schools? How do we share God's love in our charities and outreach? The Catholic Echo amplifies the voice of Catholics. In the six counties of the Diocese of Youngstown. Connect with us to be inspired and challenged. To a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and His Church. Visit catholicecho.org to find the Catholic Echo magazine weekly podcasts, inspirational videos, and our Sunday Mass from St. Columba Cathedral. Follow Diocesan Social Media on Facebook and Instagram. Or find what's happening now at doy.org. The Catholic Echo is your source for spiritual growth in the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. If you have a story idea for the Catholic Echo magazine, podcast, or website, send an email to catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. We'd love to hear your ideas.
Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeastern Ohio? That's more than 150,000 people. In the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. All right, welcome back to the Catholic Echo Podcast. I'm Megan Farrell, still here with my wonderful colleagues, Katie Wagner, Father Jack Lavelle, and Michael Hoy. And we're going to talk a little bit about some projects that we have coming up from the communications department. Father Lavelle, would you like to tell us about Diocesan Media Day, which is your brainchild? Well, I think many people are aware of the archangels, and we lump them together, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. We have two parishes in the diocese named for St. Michael, the one that I'm pastor of, and then one in Canton. Michael is briefly the guardian of police and military and that sense of protection. Raphael is seen as the patron of medical workers and to care for people in that way. But Gabriel really is the messenger. While all angels are messengers, we know Gabriel's story better than we know Michael or Raphael. And so in the church, we've always taken Gabriel as the patron of communications, of getting that message out. And we know it all stems from the fact that he brought that message to Mary, inviting Mary not just to become the mother of Jesus, but to really give the good news of Jesus to the world. And so in that vein, we call upon the patronage of Gabriel. And when we were looking at the calendar, we realized that the Archangel's Feast actually falls on a Sunday this year. Now, it's still ordinary time liturgy, unless you're uh, a parish name for one of them and you can celebrate your feast day. But we still thought it would be a good weekend to make everyone aware of the strides that we've made in communications. This really was the brainchild of Bishop Bonner when he came here. We know that some early plans were started under Bishop Murray, but were not able to be realized. And so Bishop Bonner was very intentional about the need for us to increase our communications, not just getting the message out, but also getting people engaged in that work of communications. While we're all sitting here at this table, Our efforts are that everybody can become a Gabriel, taking the message of the good news out to those they encounter. And so we want to highlight what we're able to accomplish, but also invite everyone else along on that journey. And speaking of engagement, Michael Hoy, our social media specialist, will tell us a little bit more about some of the upcoming projects. We'll see there. Yes. So like big time projects for me is like a bunch of little projects tied in one. But I would say with the social media aspect of things, I've developed Voice of the Diocese a social media content post, and it's just going to focus on people who work here, what they do, even like they had a quote or a scripture verse that they would like to use just to give the diocese a face rather than just give information. I love providing information through the diocesan social media, but I also would like to use it as a way to evangelize. I highlight the saints a lot. And the reason why I do that is because I believe they can be great examples And they can teach us a lot of things, and we can also relate to them better because they've had their own hardships. We can take away a lot from that. So I like to use social media as a way to evangelize. I would say another big thing I'm working on is the training seminars I'll be hosting in the future, as well as making some videos on how to use Canva for logos, flyer design, and video creation. Thank you. We're really looking forward to those. And Katie, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the projects coming up at the Catholic Echo Magazine? Sure. So a couple months ago, out of a meeting that we had with Bishop Bonner, which it's very, very cool that our bishop has a background in communications. You know, when we were at the Catholic Media Conference that was in Atlanta earlier this year, you know, that's always an opportunity to talk to your fellow media colleagues and you know, sort of see how things are run in other places. But one advantage that we really have is that Bishop 
very much understands what it is that we're doing and supports everything that we're doing. So, you know, one of my favorite things to do throughout the year is to sit down with him and talk about ideas for the magazine and, you know, what he'd like to see. And especially with him being the editor of the Priest magazine, he just really knows what he's talking about. So out of that meeting came some new sections that we've developed and we've added to the magazine. One of them is a section on Pope Francis's prayer intention. So if you haven't seen that, then go ahead and, and check it out. We debuted that a couple months ago. We have another section that is called Ask Father. And that is kind of interesting because that was Bishop's idea, but we had a reader who simultaneously had suggested it as well. So it kind of was the serendipitous thing. Like, obviously, this is something that we should add to the magazine. This is very cool. So Father Manning, who teaches at the seminary, he's taken that on for us. So if ever you have a question that you'd like to have answered by a priest, feel free to reach out to us at catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. And just in general, you know, one of the things that the bishop would like us to focus on a little bit more is providing more formational content in the magazine as opposed to more news-centric content, which obviously there will still be news, obviously there will still be events. But at the end of the day, what we're here to do is to evangelize. So, you know, having the magazine reflect that more strongly is definitely a priority. You'll see some of that in our October issue with our feature that we have on the various saints you can pray to for different illnesses. And we have a lot of fun content coming up as well. If you would ever like to submit a recipe, that's a really good way to support the Echo. We're always looking to feature our readers' recipes. And also, you know, like I mentioned, we had a reader who submitted a idea for a column, and we took it, and we're running with it. We're delighted with it. So if anyone ever has any ideas, you know, never hesitate to reach out. Once again, that's catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Excellent. And so for Diocesan Media Day, that is really our big ask. The big thing you can do to support our diocesan efforts and these evangelization efforts is to share your thoughts and ideas with us. Share your recipes to Catholic Echo at youngstowndiocese.org. If you have spiritual questions for this podcast, for the magazine, for Ask Father, for other social media content that we do. We love to answer your questions. You can also send those to communications, plural, at youngstowndiocese.org. And our staff at the parishes, uh, we also really want to recognize them. I mean, they really are our voice. They are the front door of our church. Many of them, quite literally, are the first face you see when you walk into the church or when folks want to get involved. So we want to take Diocesan Media Day to thank them, to lift them up, and to also encourage them to send us along if they get spiritual questions that they want to see us share and recipes. We also have online, one of the new projects with the website is our Mass Finder at doi.org. And our parishes have been doing a great job making sure that the Mass times are up to date online. And this is a great resource because now even our parishes that don't have the staff or expertise to have a website at least have a page on doi.org where folks can find the right Mass time to go to Mass. It's a great help as well with all the mergers going on. So we know there's a lot of changes and our prayers are with all of our folks at the parishes as we celebrate. Thank you very much for listening and we hope you have a wonderful Feast of the Archangels. The Catholic Echo Podcast is a production of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. Your host has been Dennis Viviano. Have a blessed day and may God be with you.